Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have a, I think it's a 2015, it's a 6.2 liter Ford, and it came in with a misfire. So this thing pretty much had, I mean, it was barely running pulling it into the shop. So I scanned it, I had some codes, I had like a, a P0306, I think, a 6. It wasn't an 8, uh, because it was on the... It might have been a 7. It was either a, a 6 or a 7. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It was on the driver's side of the motor. And so I pull it in. All right, cool. I got a misfire. So first step is uh, relative compression, right? Let's see if it's motor or if it's injector, spark, you know, fuel. So I crank it over and sure enough, I got a cylinder that's just dead. And uh, so anyway, so I go and inspect it. I end up pulling the valve cover and I found that I had a broken valve spring. So normally, you just replace the valve spring and the valve seal. There's an updated spring and an updated seal. And, uh, and you can move on, right? Well, uh, this one here, they drove it for a long time with the broken valve spring. And so the valve was damaged. We tried pulling the valve up and doing the leak down. We couldn't get any sealing at all whatsoever in the cylinder. And so they opted for a, uh, a used motor. Uh, I don't remember how many miles were on it, but um, it's a fleet company, and they said put a used motor in it, and uh, so that's what we did. So funny thing is, I get the used motor, and I install it in the truck and get it uh, halfway hooked up. I'm rolling the motor over to uh, to get the torque converter bolts in, and I get to a certain spot on the crank, and it won't turn. And I have to push it real hard to get past it. I go back around, same spot get stuck again. I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? So then we had to put oil in it. I had to hook up the starter and do all this. And sure enough, crank it over. And you can tell there's a problem. I did a compression test. I found multiple cylinders that were bad. And uh, what sucks is the engine looked really good. So that's a real bummer. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to replace this valve spring. So that way, if you have this problem or come across this, uh, you know how to do it. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, I would say the only difficult part is the keeper. Uh, in this one, I was trying to film and uh, and do the job with with you know with one hand, so you'll see what happens with that. But it was a used motor, and it was going to the junkyard or going back to the place as a core. I'm not sure. So, anyways, before we do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so here we go. We got this uh, 2015 6.2. This is the engine that's out. I just replaced it uh, because the valve is damaged. But you see that spring, that, that coil that's sticking out. This has a broken valve spring. I'm going to show you how to replace that. So the first step is obviously going to be to remove your valve cover. All right. Not too hard. All right, you want to leave your intake spark plug in and take your exhaust spark plug out. All right, in. Right in there. And we're gonna get a leak down and we're gonna put it in there to push the valve up so we can pull the spring out. Okay, so on this one here, this valve is probably going to drop because we have a we have a sealing issue on this uh, cylinder, and that's why we replaced the engine. They drove it a lot of miles with a broken valve spring, and so we tried prying up on the valve, and we couldn't get the leak down to change, indicating that the valve either dropped down and hit the piston, or something happened and it, and it damaged the cylinder head, and so we replaced the motor with a used motor, and so from here, what you're going to do is. You're going to go ahead and remove both of these rocker assemblies. You're going to remove the intake and the exhaust to make sure that the valves are closed. Uh, if you try to position the cams a certain way and your intake valve isn't, isn't closed, then your valve over here is going to drop. So that's why we're going to go ahead and remove both of these assemblies here. And it's 10 millimeters all the way across. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now when you loosen these, you wanna loosen them evenly all the way across, and you wanna slowly release each one 
because you one uh, there's going to be tension on certain ones uh, because of the cam lobes it's going to be pushing down on the valves and you're going to have that spring tension so you want to make sure that you do them evenly and then from here And then from here, it's gonna come off just like that. All right, let me get this off and get this set up to show you how to do the valve spring. Okay, so now that I got the rockers off, you can see just how bad this spring is. All right, it's broken. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. There's a lot of different ways to do it. This is what I have right here. This is what, if you look up the service information, uh, uh, a valve spring compressor like this is what Ford recommends that you use. So let me set it up. We gotta depress the, the, the hat here so we can get the keepers out, which are right there. And then that way we can release it and pull the valve spring out. Let me set it up. Okay, so doing this with a broken valve spring is a little bit tricky because the spring doesn't have the, um, the space between the coils to get the spring depressor in there. So what you gotta do is you have to get the two arms into the spring like that locked in. Then you're gonna have the top on the hat and you're gonna screw it down until those keepers are up. Then what you're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab the keeper. There's one of them right there. And then now we're going to try to get this other one. And that one fell down on the engine, which is fine because we're not putting this back together. So that's how you do it right there. And then you're going to unscrew this and go ahead and take your valve off or your spring off. And so here's a good look right here at what the spring looks like. There you go to show you it's broken. All right, and so now this valve is up. And if I, when I release the air pressure from this, the valve is gonna drop. So you wanna make sure that you keep it on there. Now this is a good time to go ahead and replace your valve stem seal as well. There's updated stem seals. I don't see it, oh, there you go. It comes off that easy. And then you're just gonna get your new one going to lubricate it, slide it on. You're going to set your spring up the same way that I did with this one. You're going to put it on and you're going to depress it until you can get your keepers back in. You're going to set your keepers in there and then you're going to release the tension. And that's how you do the valve spring in a 6.2. So in this one, I've released the pressure, but the valve is staying up. So it hasn't completely dropped. But there it is right there. And that is why you want to put the air pressure in there. So this one looks like it's gonna stay right there. It's probably up against the piston. So there you go. Okay, so as you can see in this one here, I dropped one of the keepers. Uh, normally you wouldn't be doing it with a camera in one hand and a tool in another. Uh, when you do this, you have these two little tiny little, little metal things and they're tapered and they're like this and they have a hole in the center and they go down and they have a, they have a, about right here, they have a, um, a, a groove and that's where, uh, uh, that's where they, that's where the, 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 the valve seal, the seat, the top of the spring, the metal thing at the top of the spring, that's where it comes up and it rides. Uh, and so they, it holds them in. Uh, but basically all you do is, is compress that valve spring and you can take a magnet pocket screwdriver and you grab the keepers and they'll both pull up. Uh, they stick to the valve when you do it, uh, because there's, uh, oil on it. Um, and you know, I'll show you how to, you know, to do the leak down. You want to do a leak down, keep it pushed up. Uh, so Anyways, uh, well, I hope this was helpful. 
if you have this problem, there's multiple different kinds of spring compressors. Uh, I have this one. This is just a universal spring compressor, but there's many other different kinds. Um, and they make some some really some really nice kits that are really easy to use with this motor. But I used what I had and it worked. So hey, there we go. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. See all kinds of cool stuff, see some gas, see some diesel, and see some tools. I mean, you know, if you do this for a living, you want to see the tools. You want to see the tools that I'm showing you because I'm going to show you a lot of tools that are not on the tool truck that you can use and buy for a lot cheaper and get warranted the same way and in some aspects, probably warranted even faster. So anyways, check them out. So also check out the merchandise store. We can get you see all the blah, 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 or you can get a t-shirt, coffee cup, or a water bottle and support the channel. Appreciate you watching the video, and I will see you next time.